Welcome to Jubilee Training Center, a place of new beginnings. I declare right now that because you are anointed, and we ask God that He would ignite a fire inside of your Here at Jubilee Training Center, there are many opportunities to fellowship and serve. A ministry of ministers who empower, develop, and apply the words of God. In Christ Jesus to go to God and to talk to God about anything. Developing strong friendships and accountability among the men of Jubilee Training Center through regular gathering and group interaction. Seeing every woman develop into the fullness of the virtuous woman God intended for her to be. Promoting fun while building character and teaching children the fundamental principles of Christianity. Instilling positive values in adolescents through creative and biblically sound methods. Here at Jubilee Training Center, under the leadership of Pastor Jerome McGee Sr. and Lady Donna McGee, we develop, empower, encourage, and propel people into their destiny. We encourage you to browse our website for more details about our ministry. Our location is 7000 Franklin Boulevard, Suite 560, Sacramento, California, 95823. Well, praise the Lord, and welcome to Jubilee Training Center, a place of new beginnings, where it is our mission to develop, empower, encourage, and propel people into their destiny. Hi, I am Jerome McGee, pastor of Jubilee, together with my wife, Lady Donna. We are the founders, the directors, the senior servant leaders. Servant leaders, that sounds good. And uh, we're excited about providing a platform for uh, ministers and people who are called to come out and to share, not just with us at Jubilee, that's 7000 Franklin Boulevard, Suite 560, but with you, with the rest of the world. So we have JTC Online Saturday service. And I'm so glad you're here. And before we go any further, this is what I want you to do. I want you to subscribe if you haven't done it. Subscribe here, YouTube. Just look below my image here and you'll see that little button. Press that, subscribe. And then I want you to like and share. Tonight is going to be great. It's going to be great. We've had some, some excellent, all of the speakers have been excellent. Uh, we've had several series uh, from Carolyn Cole, uh, from uh, Yolanda Blackshire, from Sharon Bodley Harden. We've had other speakers, uh, myself and uh, Angel Gallo, and, uh, and we've had uh, a few others, yeah, just a few others, uh, guest speakers and, and people who have had a word. Tonight, folks, tonight, say tonight. Tonight. I said it for you because I couldn't hear you, so I said it. So tonight we have none other than the First Lady of Jubilee Training Center. We say First Lady. I won't say my First Lady. She's my only lady. This is my best friend, my wife, partner, lifelong partner, um, 42 years and counting. I know, but she is dynamic. Folks, she's dynamic and she's got a dynamic word for you. Listen, I, I want you to make sure that you, you're prepared to receive my wife, Lady Donna, prepared to receive her, the word that she has for you tonight. And when she's finished, I'm gonna come back and we'll talk some more about what we just experienced. All right? Okay, now tune in and let's pay close attention. My name is Donna McGee. And I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you coming on with me tonight and listening to uh, me talk about back trouble. Um, I want to thank Pastor for giving me the opportunity to uh, come before you. I just, I mean, it's, it's not often people will just give up their pulpit, but I appreciate that him, him letting me come on tonight and just express uh, what God has given me. Uh, to help us move forward uh, 
it is my hope that by the time we finish this series, it's going to be a three-part series, but it is my hope that by the time we finish this series, that we would be able to walk upright before the Lord. Amen? And so with that, as I said, my title is uh, Back Trouble, and I'll be coming from Genesis 19. It's my main text, 19, 19 through 26. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for loving me so, Lord God, that you've given me this opportunity to come before your people. And Lord, I do not take it lightly. Lord, I thank you that you speak through me, Lord God, that Lord, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your tender mercy. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for keeping us, Lord God, that you kept let no hurt, harm, or danger come nigh thee. And so, Father, I thank you that you've given me another opportunity today, Lord God. I woke up this morning and you've given me another opportunity to give it right. Lord, I thank you for this assignment and I pray that I would do you well. Lord, I know according to your word in 2 Samuel, Lord God, you said that you're committed to us. And Father God, I want to emulate you. I am committed to you. I'm committed to this word. I'm committed to the call. I'm committed to, to do um, as you have commanded me to do. So, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you that my words, Lord God, would be clear. I thank you that the antidotes that I give, Lord God, would be acceptable. I thank you, Lord God, that as people are listening, Father God, that they would get understanding. Because you said in your word that in all thy getting, get understanding. And so I thank you for today. I thank you for your love. I thank you for just loving me. And as we go forth in your word, dear God, hallelujah, Jesus, that you would be glorified. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen? Amen. Um, I just want to encourage you tonight that as you are listening to this, make sure that you have a pencil and some paper because I have a lot of scriptures that I'm going to give you. Because I have scriptures that I want you to, to be able to go back and read later so that you can go back whenever you're feeling discouraged about something or whenever you're suffering from back trouble, that you'll be able to pull these scriptures up and that it'll help you. You know, it's it's uh, it's funny because a lot of people think back trouble. Yeah, back trouble. When you're having back trouble, like you have spasms, and all types of people have different um, pains and things of, of a sort. And people who have back trouble, it's kind of easy to tell. I mean, if you look at somebody uh, who's having back trouble, whether it be a pinched nerve or whether it be a um, uh, uh, slip disc or disc, disc generated disc or anything like that. My husband suffers from, from back pain. And so he's had things put in his back or rods put in his back. Our daughter had rods put in her back, you know, people with scoliosis. And so we've done things to correct our back issues. Uh, it's, it's so funny that when you talk to doctors or lumbar specialists, they'll quickly tell you that the back is one of the hardest things that you can diagnose or, or fix, so to speak. I mean, they, they do what they can. They shave uh, spines or they, try to put jelly in and they put screws and they put cages and they put all these things in trying to help you with your back issues. But uh, I think most people that you've talked to um, who have back issues normally continue to walk around with those back issues unless God has stepped in and do what he does. And so uh, tonight, uh, in this uh, story tonight or in my uh, speech tonight, hopefully I'll give you something to help you with your back trouble. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And so I'll be reading from the Message Bible, but I want to give you a backstory. So I'll be reading from the Message Bible. I'm going to go back to uh, chapter 18 when um, Abraham was talking to God. Um, you know, Abraham and Sarah, at the beginning of that story in 18, it talked about how uh, some men had came to Abraham, talked to them about having a baby, and Sarah laughed and said, oh, you know, I'm too old to have a baby. And then they said, but in a year from now, We'll come back and you should have a baby. And Sarah laughed and then she lied and said, oh, I didn't laugh. No, I, I wasn't laughing. Sometimes, you know, when we get caught up, we, uh, I don't know if it was a nervous laugh or what, but she did laugh. So anyway, as I move past, fast forward, uh, Moses is talking to God. And God says, I am growing weary. I'm growing weary. I'm growing weary. And uh, because there's a place called Sodom. And Gomorrah, and I'm really growing weary. He said, because they're, they're doing everything that they're big enough to do. You got people, um, men and men sleeping with each other. It didn't say women, but I'm quite sure it was. Anyway, whatever they were doing, I shouldn't say sleeping because they weren't sleeping. They were, as the Bible said, and they knew each other. Um, but you have people who are doing things that um, are contrary to the word of God. And so 
um, God was like, I'm just, I'm just tired of it. And then Moses said, well, Lord, if you can find 10 decent people or in King James, it says 10 righteous people, but in the message, it says, if you can find 10 decent people, will you not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And God said, if I can find 50 decent people, then I will not destroy. He said, well, Lord, um, I was thinking, what if you, if you can find 45 people, would you uh, not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And God said, yes, I would not destroy it for 45 people. He said, well, Lord, well, what about, you know, sometimes your kids start bargaining with you. This, I can only imagine how Moses sounded like a little kid. Well, well, Lord, what about if you can find 40 people, 40 decent people? And God said, if you can find 40 decent people, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he kept, then he's thinking, wow, because he knew that he knew what was going on in, in, in that city. So he said, well, Lord, what about if you can find 30 decent people? <laughs> and God said, wow, I, guess, I can only imagine God saying, man, you drive a hard bargain. He said, yeah, OK, I, if I can find 30 decent people, I will not destroy it. And then Moses thought some more. And he's like, wow, 30. Yeah, they, yeah. They, I said, he said, these, these folks are still acting a fool. Well, Lord, what about if you can find at least 10 decent people? And God said, if I can find 10 decent people, I won't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Moses said, okay, Lord, if you can find 10 decent people. And that's where we pick up in my story, where I'm going to start reading in Genesis, um, the 19th chapter, uh, beginning at the, at the very beginning. Uh, talking about the visits, the angels' visits to Sodom and Gomorrah. And it reads, The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening. Lot was sitting at the city gate. Now, Lot is Abraham's nephew. So the story that I'm talking about now, I'm, I gave you the front part of that story because that was about Abraham. And Abraham has a nephew named Lot who he took care of. And then when they got to that place in the that fork in the road, so to speak, um, Abraham moved to one side and on, on 99, <laughs> and then Lot moved to the other side of 99. Uh, it wasn't 99, but anyway, Lot moved to Sodom and Gomorrah. And so then Lot was sitting at the city gate. So now when you think about back then, when people, uh, most of the cities had gates around them. Like I, if you look at our cities now, they don't have gates that uh, when you come into a city, you see the sign that says city limits. It'll say Sacramento city limits, Elk Grove city limits, Stockton city limits, uh, the surrounding areas, West Sacramento city limits. That's what you see. But back then they had city gates. And so the men used to sit at the city gate and what they would do is they conducted a lot of their business. The men would sit and talk um, about uh, the commerce. They would talk about a lot of things, but that's what they did at the city gate. So when anybody came, men were sitting there. So if you wanted to know something, you'd ask whatever man that was sitting around at the city gate. So now Lot was sitting at the city gate. He saw them and he got up and welcomed them, bowing before them and said, please, my friends, come to my house and stay the night. Wash up and you can rise early and be on your way and be refreshed. They said, no, we will sleep here in the streets. But he, he insisted. Now remember, Lot is, is Abraham's uh, nephew. And so you remember how Abraham was bargaining with God? Listen to what Lot, so it didn't, the, you know, the apple don't far, fall far from the tree. Listen up. But he insisted, wouldn't take no for an answer. And they relented and went home with him. Lot fixed a hot meal for the, them and they ate. I can only imagine a hot meal um, they probably had some lox or they had some unleavened bread. They probably had some peas. They had some uh, some type of lentils, I'm quite sure. They had some leeks. And so he fixed them a hot meal. And that's showing hospitality. Somebody had come to your city, come to your house. You show them hospitality. And this is what Lot was doing. <clears throat> he said, before they went to bed, men all over the city of Sodom, young and old, descended on the house from all sides and box them in. Now, you can tell this is a very small town. When somebody comes to town, you can tell when you live in a small town. When you come to somebody come to town, everybody see who you're taking into your house. And so these men from the city, the city called Sodom and Gomorrah. And <clears throat> you can read the backstory about Sodom and how it got its name. But um, these people came from all over and they wanted those men that um, Lot has as his guests. He said, they yelled out, Lot, 
where are those men who are staying with you for, for the night? Bring them out so that we can have our sport with them. They want to be able to play with them, tease them. They want to have a relationship with them. And Lot was like, uh, Lot went out, barred the door behind him and said, brothers, <laughs> hey, bro, nah, uh, uh it's not going to work like that. Please don't be violent. Stop talking nasty. This is not what, you don't talk about by my guests like that. Please don't do that. Um, what you're saying is not right. It's not nice. And that's not how you treat my guests. That's what he says. And he goes on to say, I have two daughters, virgins. Let me bring them out and you can take your pleasure with them. But I don't, but don't touch these men. He was offering his daughters up to these men because he knew if those men that had descended on his house had messed with these two men that were godly men that came from God and, 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 and what their purpose was, he was trying to save their lives by saying, I don't do it. Just, just take my daughters. They, they've never known a man. So just take my daughters. Me personally, I don't think he should have offered his daughters, but that's not, I'm not here to, to change the narrative of the story. I'm just telling you how the story goes. And then he says, let me bring them out and you can take your pleasure with them, but don't touch these men. They are my guests. They said, get lost. You dropped from nowhere and now you're going to tell us how to run our lives. We'll treat you worse than, than them. So they got indignant with Lot. I was like, wait, you, 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 you are an out of town person yourself. And how dare you tell us how we're supposed to act in our city? We know what we do. When you came here, you should have known this is what we do in our city. So therefore, this is what we want to do. We want those men and we want them now. We want the men and we want them out. So they beat all over the door. Open up this door, Lot. Open up this door. Let us in. So they be banging on the door and doing all kind of ugly things and saying probably some things that, were probably, uh, that we probably shouldn't say. I'm trying to keep this rated G. And they charged past Lot to break down the door. The two men reached out and pulled Lot inside the house, locking the door. They struck blind the men who were trying to break down the door, both leaders and followers, leaving them groping in the dark. So these were some these were some men that were sent. They were angels who were sent from God. So I'm quite sure they were some big guys. I mean, big burly dudes. And like you broke in and you come there with your broke wrist talking about, hey, I want that one. It didn't work like that. So the two men said to Lot, do you have any other any other family here? Sons, daughters, anybody in the city? He said, get them out here. And now we're going to destroy this place. The outcries of victims here to God are defending. We are, we've been sent to blast this place into oblivion. oblivion. So this, these men are telling Lot, okay, get your family, grab your cousins, grab your uncles, grab, grab your, your dog, grab everybody, get out all your family members. And we got to get out of this city because we're getting ready to destroy this. And this is what you want to do. Get your people, get your people now. If you got family, you got cousins, you got brothers, you got daughters, you got whoever you have. Let's get these people ready because we're going to destroy this place. And they said oblivion. That means it was never going to exist anymore. Lot went out to warn his fiance, the fiance of his daughters. Evacuate this place. God is about to destroy the city. But his daughters would be husbands treated as, as, as a joke. So they thought it was funny. Yeah, Lot, you just, man, you just talking trash. You ain't nobody going to destroy the city, is what they were saying. And he was like, no, God said he's going to destroy the city. We got to get out of here. You're my fiance's daughter. You're my, you're, you're betrothed to my, my daughters. I really want you to go with me. The angels have come and they said, and so sometimes I think, sometimes people get um, jaded because they've heard stories so many times about somebody doing something and they didn't believe what Lot said. And Lot's like, but I, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. Lot could have been, maybe he was one of those people who played a lot of jokes and he was a prankster. So nobody believed what he was saying. But anyway, I go on to say, but the daughters would be husbands treated as a joke. At break of day, the angels pushed Lot to get going. He's like, come on, hurry up guys. Come on, let's go. Get your wife, get your two daughters out of here before it's too late and you're caught in the punishment of the city. Lot was dragging his feet. He didn't want to go. He was like, I need to grab all my, I need to get everything. I need to get this. You know, sometimes we get ready. Somebody tell you to get out. Oh, I, well, I need to get my, I need to get my purse. I need to get my shoes. I need to get these pictures. I need to get this. I need to get that. Oftentimes people who've gone into houses or, or the house catch on fire. What do they do? They got to run back in the house. I want to get this and I, I want to get this. And oh, I got I to gotta get this picture and I got to get this. And I get it. No, when your house is on fire, you don't have time to go back and get in. You, but that's why you have a good memory. And if you didn't, you save those pictures. Now we save the pictures on everything in other places so that whatever photos that you have, you put those things in, in places in case you have a fire, put them in a safe or whatever, a fireproof safe. But God was going to destroy that. So he told them, you need to get out and get out now. 
And so at the break of day, the angels pushed a lot, a lot to get going. Hurry, get your wife and your two daughters out here before it's too late and you're caught in the punishment of the city. Lot was dragging his feet. The men grabbed Lot's arms and the arms of his wife and his daughters. God was so merciful to them. See, so God, he, he was waiting. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give you the opportunity. Y'all get on out here, get out of here fast. And they dragged their feet and then they dragged them to safety outside the city. When they had them outside, Lot was told, now run for your life. So once he got them out, it's almost like being dragged out the house. Now run, run for your life. And they said, don't look back. They were given the warning, don't look back. Don't stop anywhere on the plain. Run for the hills or you'll be swept away. He said, run. Um, almost if you think about like a, in, in uh, the movie Lion King, he said, run Simba, run. Anyway, that's what they were telling him. I can only imagine he's like, run, run for your lives. Run until you get to where you need to. Don't stop anywhere. Don't stop to pick up anything. Don't, if you drop a shoe, keep going. Don't stop. So Lot protested. He said, no, master, masters, you can't mean it. I know that you've taken a liking to me and I have done and have done me an immense favor in saving my life. But I can't run for the mountains. Who knows what terrible thing might happen to me in the mountains and leave me for dead. Now, if you give an instruction and somebody comes and warn you and tell you to run for them, don't stop anywhere. Run for the mountains. Don't stop till you get to the mountains. And they're going to turn around and say, well, no, I, 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 well, I can't do that because something else might be there. If God gave you instruction, I'm quite sure he's pre prepared the way. There's nothing going to be. But anyway, Lot is a lot like his uncle, so he's going to bargain with with God and ask him about some other things. He says, who knows what terrible thing that might happen to me in the mountains and leave me for dead. Look over there. That's a town. It's close enough to get to. It's a small town, hardly anything to it. Let me escape there and save my life. It's a mere wide place in the road. So he told me it was a small town. It was a little whistle stop, what, they, what some people would call it. But can, I, can I go over there? Now you were told to go to the mountains. You were told to get your family. You drug your feet on that. You were told to, to don't worry about taking anything. Just get out and get out now. Uh, you were told to run to the mountains. And, you, and you're going to turn around. Well can, I, well, can I have this or can I have that? Oftentimes we turn around and asking, looking back and asking, can we have this and can we have that instead of going forward? That's back trouble. Now, let's keep going. All right, Lot, if you insist, I'll let you have your way. And I won't stamp out the town you spotted. But hurry up, run for it. I can't do anything until you get there. That's why the town was called Zoar. That is, it means small town. The sun was high in the sky when Lot arrived at Zoar. Then God rained brimstone and fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah, a river of lava from God out of the sky and destroyed these cities and the entire plain and everyone who lived in the city and everything that grew from the ground. When God says he wasn't playing, he's not playing. It was almost like um, if you've ever seen a volcano, but instead of it coming out of the mountains, it came out of the sky. Lava came down. And when lava comes down or when lava it goes, it destroys everything in the path. I mean, when I say everything, everything, if it's, if it's above ground, uh, it's going to die. Whether it's grass, it's rabbits, if it's dogs, it's cat, whatever. He destroyed, when I say he destroyed the city, he destroyed that city. He destroyed those cities, I should say. He destroyed all of it. And then he said, um, everything that came out of the ground. So Lot had got to safety. However, but Lot's wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Right there. She had back trouble. And I'll continue this story next week. All right. I left it right there because I want to explain to you a little bit more why it's important that we don't look back when we're given a command to go forward. Amen. All right. Then I'll see you next week. You have a blessed and mighty day. Go with God.